the choice of Finance Minister Lawrence Wong as the PAP's fourth-generation leader caps uncertainty over who would take the top post. The decision paves the way for Mr Wong to become the country's next Prime Minister. Clara Lee tells us more. Mr Lawrence Wong is widely recognised by Singaporeans as one of the co-chairs of the country's COVID-19 task force. But before entering politics, he served as Principal Private Secretary to Prime Minister Lee Hsien Long. He also headed the Energy Market Authority, where he is credited with helping form the basis for a more sustainable energy future. The 49-year-old resigned in 2011 to make his political debut and won a parliamentary seat as part of the PAP team in West Coast GRC. He first held positions in the ministries of defence as well as communications and information before he was appointed Minister for Culture, Community and Youth. Mr Wong led the team that got the Singapore Botanic Gardens to be recognised as the country's first UNESCO World Heritage Site. Following the general election in 2015, Mr Wong was made National Development Minister. He led the steering committee for the development of the Jurong Lake Gardens. A year later, he was also appointed Second Finance Minister. After the last general election in 2020, he was elected to the PAP's Central Executive Committee for the first time, reflecting his growing prominence within the party. Following a cabinet reshuffle in the same year, Mr Wong took over the position of Education Minister. In 2021, then-Deputy Prime Minister Heng Swee Kiet stepped aside as the leader of Singapore's fourth-generation team. This led to another reshuffle that brought Mr Wong into the Finance Minister position. For more on today's leadership announcement, we're joined by Associate Professor Eugene Tan from the School of Law at the Singapore Management University. Uh, Professor Tan, this forged fourth generation of Singapore's political leadership, they've taken about a year to come to this consensus after Heng Sui Kiet announced that he'd resign on, on April the 8th last year. What does the entire process, though, particularly th this multiple rounds of consultation that we've seen, tell you about the gravity of this selection? Well, Don, you know, this was a selection that the uh, 4G leaders cannot get it wrong. Um, you know, not that they got it wrong uh, the last time, you know, but this is a choice that uh, they, in a way, have to live with, uh, you know, regardless of how the ruling party does, uh, you know, in the next general election, which is due by November 2025. Um, but the, the long drawn process, I think, in a way, has uh, secured, uh, at least in the minds of the 4G leaders, you know, who they think, you know, is best placed, um, you know, to lead them. Um, and, and so this long drawn process, uh, you know, certainly covered the, the pandemic period. Uh, and that gave the opportunity, you know, for, for Mr. Wong, um, you know, to, to demonstrate his capabilities, but more importantly, you know, to show, uh, you know, how he could bring uh, the team together. And on the point of just how visible uh, Lawrence Wong was during the pandemic, Professor Tan, how far would you say that the manner in which Singapore fought against COVID-19 and, and his leadership and as part of, as part of uh, the task force, uh, he was one of the co-chairs in that he still is, how far did that actually contribute to this choice as a first among equals? I would say that, you know, it is prob probably pivotal. Uh, I think, you know, the, as being the, as the co-chair of, uh, you know, the COVID-19 task force, you know, it gave him a lot of prominence, you know, it, it um, because there were regular briefings, you know, by the multi-ministry task force. And, and it was through these briefings, you know, that I think he uh, showed, you know, the communicator that, that he is, you know, he, he's a straight talker, but at the same time, you know, he could emote. Uh, he could explain difficult policies in fairly clear terms. Um, and the decisiveness, I think, you know, at least in, in public, you know, demonstrated that, um, you know, that this was someone, uh, you know, that Singaporeans could, could identify with. But I think within the government, I think it was his ability to pool the different resources together, you know, to work with his colleagues, um, you know, that gave him the opportunity to demonstrate his leadership style, his capabilities. Um, and, and I think that in turn, um, you know, help him to win uh, the trust and confidence, you know, of his peers. Uh, but we mustn't forget also, you know, that he also um, had the role, he still has the role of the finance minister, a role that has held for at least three years. And that has also, you know, enabled him, you know, to explain, 
uh, you know, the policy choices that lie ahead for Singapore and why sometimes, you know, difficult choices, um, you know, ha have to be made. Um, so I think, you know, the last two to three years, you know, have been very instrumental uh, and, and one wonders, you know, whether if there wasn't a pandemic, you know, the 4G leaders may have uh, thought differently. But I think one final point, certainly on this uh, uh, on this score, you know, is that I think the, the PAP certainly has their eye also on the face, you know, that they think could help them win votes, you know, not just in the next uh, general election, but in the next few general elections. You know? And I think that there is a sense that, uh, you know, Mr. Wong, you know, given the, the, the profile and the publicity, um, you know, could certainly le leverage on that. And we understand that there was overwhelming support for Lawrence Wong in this selection as, as 4G leader. How important is, is that point of, of him having this overwhelming support in terms of the renewal process? I think given the uncertainty, um, you know, given that, 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 that it was in, in many respects a keen race, uh, you know, with no standout uh, um, um, leader, uh, that the fact that there was this consensus, um, you know, uh, the PM statement, you know, mentioned about how, uh, you know, former PAP chair and, and, and coordinating minister, uh, uh, Mr. Corbyn Wan, went to speak to each, uh, you know, 4G leader, you know, to, to get their personal take, you know, on who they think, you know, is best placed to succeed uh, PM Lee. Um, so I think, you know, the, 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 the process of, uh, you know, forming the consensus, you know, and arriving at an overwhelming consensus, I think it's important to show, you know, that Mr. Wong does have the trust and confidence of his peers um, and, and that there is no issue, you know, that he is uh, someone that they are prepared to have uh, as their first among equals. And Professor Tan, tell me, we, we just had an election not too long ago, but does this pick in your mind, increase the possibility at all that we might see an early election? I, I doubt so, Don. I think that, you know, the government's priority still remains, uh, you know, keeping Singaporeans safe, you know, uh, from the pandemic uh, and, and also to learn to live with the pandemic, uh, but also securing livelihoods, um, you know. So even as the pandemic, you know, is, is rather much under control, uh, you know, although there, there is also the unpredictable arc that we of the pandemic that we have to be careful of. I think the focus is now very much on ensuring, you know, that, that we can have a sustained recovery that will bounce back uh, even stronger. Uh, so providing Singaporeans, you know, with a sense of economic security, uh, you know, despite the global uncertainties, um, I think it's something that the government, you know, will need time, you know, to work on. Uh, and this is also a time, you know, that they can continue, you know, to, to buttress the confidence and trust that Singaporeans need to have, um, you know, in the government, uh, one that will eventually, you know, be led by uh, Minister uh, Lawrence Wong. So I don't think, you know, the government is in a hurry to call, you know, for an early election. I, I, I anticipate that, you know, the government will want to take as much time as possible, um, you know, to to ensure that they are well placed, you know, to 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 check off all the right boxes, you know, when when the time comes for them to go to the voters. Professor Tan, thank you very much for sharing your views. Always appreciate uh, chatting to you. Associate Professor Eugene Tan there from the School of Law at the Singapore Management University.